welcome back to the International Institute in Barcelona. Welcome to the second part of our webinar about neuroscience and reflexology. Welcome everybody. So where we came to in the first part, uh, it was to understand the process of the neurons, the synapses, uh, to understand what happened when we are relaxing the effect of the stimulation from the back of the brain to the frontal lobe. And um, we also understood that um, it is very much about brain waves. And we understood that the alpha brain wave is very important into what we are talking about now, because being in alpha mood, as I used to call it, it is the same as our functions of, for instance, paying better attention, taking control over our own mind and strength planning and organization, and also to take decisions. Um, it is very important, and one point more, also to control better our own behavior. This is also important. So this is the function we until now have been talking about together with also the limbic system, uh, which is the most important um, center for you know, structure. We can also set for the emotions in our body. So this is where we came to. And I would like to tell you one of my personal experiences um, because we were also talking about this subject, if why should we use facial reflexology um, or um, other neuro reflexology if we have meditation? And I were like also defending this subject because there is many person they have difficult to meditate. So one of my uh, very, very strong personal uh, experiences related to this question, it was in 94, it is uh, many years ago, <laughs> where I was just, a, this is a journey I had uh, myself to learn meditation. And um, one day, I was in the local hospital in the city I was living in Argentina. And when I left the hospital, uh, I were in a state like, I will set my brain were like paralyzed. Uh, I was so shocked because I just got uh, diagnosed that I had cancer, uh, breast cancer for second time. And now it was spread into the lymphatic system. And when I left the hospital, though, I was just there in such a shock situation that I didn't know where to go to go home. Should I go left or should I go right? I should know it. I have been there many times. I know the city perfectly, but my brain was like frozen. And I don't even remember how I went home. Um, but when I came home, my assistant, he also very shocked uh, because of this news. Um, she placed me in the treatment table and she began to give me food reflexology. And after um, some minutes, I had to ask her to stop to give me food reflexology because it actually felt as she was uh, pressing needles into my tissue every time she was touching an area. I never ever experienced this before. And uh, I have to remind you that I have been working with food reflexology for 12, 13 years at this moment, but I never, ever, never, ever have tried such a sensation having a food reflexology really at, as needles. So it was so unpleasant that I have to ask her to stop. Then she went to my face and she began working just a basic work of facial reflexology and it changed everything. I could feel that my own breathing was like normalizing. I didn't 
had any idea that I was breathing wrong or too much, too fast in this moment until she began working with step number one. I noticed myself that I get into another rhythm with my breathing. And in very, very few mo moments, I became totally calm. I became calmer and calmer. And I also went to a state where I could sleep. Whatever I really had this, um, I felt so shocked <laughs> that it is nearly uh, difficult to express it in this moment of my life. A lot of things was going on in my mind. No, my youngest daughter, she was one years old. My boy, he was 10 and my oldest daughter was 14. And it was just such a big shock to just realize I was very close to the death. <laughs> Um, so, not an easy situation to get into a relaxed moment with this news. But actually, I did. During the facial reflexology, I calmed down and I went into a sleep mood. And after, when I waked up again, I just felt so clear in my brain. And in this moment, I began a process where I decided one thing, the first thing was to survive. And it sounds very easy, no? And it is not at all, but I decided it profoundly. I want to survive. And next, next step was the plan, to do a plan, how to survive. Not just I want to, it's too easy to say I want to survive. This is not the model, but I have to plan. I have to do a plan. And I did a plan. And you know what I also did? I followed this plan step by step by step until 18 months after I declared myself for cure. So in this moment where I left this hospital door with this news, where I felt so totally paralyzed, I didn't even know how to get home. In this moment, it has not been possible for me, whatever I have learned to practice meditation, to help myself with a meditation. I didn't have um, the way to begin a meditation myself in this moment. It was just impossible. So this is a moment where I really felt uh, how the reflexology work in the body and the mind when you have such a situation. Of course, it was not first time I got a facial reflexology, no, but it was first time I got a facial reflexology in the moment that I got such a diagnosis that I actually had a stage four cancer. So this was so amazing to try how much this treatment organized my brain. And of course, I got many treatments during this next period. And I also used meditation after. What I want to explain is that it was not possible to, to take the decision even to do a meditation in the first moment. So I really, really felt that this uh, reflexology, the facial reflexology really organized my brain in this moment, a huge, huge difference. And this I have tried in other moments after, where I have had not so bad uh, messenger to, to um, organize in my brain, but other situation as we everybody had, where I felt, no, it is too much, no, too much mongoose, too much firework in my brain. I felt really overloaded in my own brain many times during my life. And every time when I'm getting a facial reflexology, it's like it's cleaned up in the bin. <laughs> now I have space for new. And this is just to explain me, you, my own feelings about it. No, but of course, I have also um, had this response from many of my clients later. I have worked with many groups of different business people now with uh, from the Japanese ambassade 
treating very, very busy business uh, men. And they said actually the same. It's I'm now I'm ready again. This is the feeling, no? So this is very, very exciting to to try really this kind of experiences in the moment where there's really something going on. So this is uh, just to explain you again my own experiences um, <laughs> about a treatment situation where I can compare with that, uh, the difference with meditation and facial reflexology. So often I will, I am um, asked what I did uh, to survive my cancer. And I always answer, first of all, I decided to survive. This is number one, really profoundly. Then I paid attention into myself, to my situation. And then I focused about the subject and I did a plan. No, without knowing from the beginning how to do it, I just did a plan. I don't know exactly, well, I did a plan how to eat. I did a plan what to do, what supplements to do, what uh, natural treatment to do. I did a plan and it, I decided I do not want chemotherapy and, you know, all this, no? So not only I did plans as as far as I could, uh, I also followed the plan that I did in the first day after. So, yes, this is my answer. <laughs> Still today, this is what I did. And the facial reflexology really um, helped me to get to this point that I was able to do so. So now, by the years, with more and more experiences, um what I did, it was to, to create a new variation of facial reflexology exactly for this subject. Normally, facial reflexology, it is about uh, seven basic steps. We call it the basic treatment and eight additional treatments. And uh, in, for instance, the education, I am also offering Temprana reflex therapy, which is about rehabilitation. In this method, we have many more um, methods, additional method to apply for not only for face, also for hands and for feet. And the additional method, this is actually what I'm using, what's called microsystem. And myself, I have studied about 200 microsystems. I think if we count with all the Russian one, there's more. But I have studied uh, Tibetan microsystem, Japanese microsystem, Vietnamese microsystems, microsystem from Korea, and some microsystem also from Russia. And this is actually what it is we are talking very much about when it's neuroreflexology. It is its microsystems. Because a microsystem, which means um, a small mapping of the body somewhere of, on the body, for instance, in this case, on the face, um, this is um, studied by the nerve system, not with meridians. So this is the neuroreflexality because it's coming from different neurosystems. So, yes, this is what I am using to build up a method. No, when I build up a new method, it takes a long, long time. It's not just easy to do. I need really to start it also. Which is the best method for this subject? Which is the best method to make it happen that the, uh, that the brain waves are changing into alpha? I need to study. Um, what is the best to method of this microsystem to use uh, to um, put attention into the frontal lobe and that the frontal lo lobe can communicate with the limbic system? All these kind of things in the right order. It must also be in the right order. 
So this is uh, the way to build up a new method. So um, first of all, um, I would like to to show you. Um, we always have like a basic steps, some basic steps also to build up a new method. And the basic steps I'm using also thinking about what is it I want to obtain, I want to show you. So this is what we are going to take a look into here. When I start up a treatment, nearly always, whatever it is for trauma therapy, it is for rehabilitation, or it is for uh, basic facial refixality, whatever, it's very common that we start up with a method we call NEP points, NEP point stimulations. And this is about a group of Acupuncture points. This is a group of acupuncture points, which is classic acupuncture points and also some new acupuncture points. The new acupuncture points, um, this is points I have studied with a group of medical doctors. It is a group of eight doctors, which one is Dr. Bossi. As I mentioned before, Dr. Bossi have been one of my biggest master in my life. And also uh, another French doctor, Dr. Imbide, together with some Chinese doctors, and they did a very big research where they found out 1196 uh, new points of acupuncture by studying where meridians are crossing with central nerves, branches from central nerves. And there were the cross is in between these two branches, a nerve and a branch of a meridian, this they call new points. So I'm also using new points in my methods from this group of doctors. And um, this is uh, this map we are looking at here, step number one, basic of facial reflexality made of, of some of these new points and also classic acupuncture points. These points, we said they have like a triple action, actually four actions, because each of these points, besides it is an acupuncture point, it's also a nerve point, it's also a capillary point, means move the blood flow, and also a lymphatic point. So by stimulating these points, um, I'm obtaining an action in all four of those systems. What is very, very important, if I also want to bring my clients into this alpha mood, that is that this stimulation are done very, very well. And I often see also in between my own students now that it is not done totally correctly. And always I think, wow, what a shame, no? Because the best results, it is actually when it's done right. And it is like this, that each of those points, actually we can feel exactly where they are on the face. Of course, it is something we need to train. We need to train it, because if we do not train it, we will never learn it. It is like any technique, you have to train it. So this point, there's like a little bend or a sign. And actually, it is where the 12 pairs of cranial nerves are popping out on the face. And then spread it in the whole tissue and the endings ending on the underlying of the skin. So this is very important to practice this technique to, first of all, touch the right point. If we touch beside, we will not have the same results as when we touch exactly. But as I already said, 
the good thing here is that you can feel it because there's many acupuncture points on the body or nerve points. You can actually not feel it exactly, but here you can feel it. So it has to be done very correctly. And also in the moment we start the stimulation, which is done by circulating pair by pair, about eight to 10 times, I used to explain, it must be done eight to 10 times. I see it very often do some three, three, four times. So no, no, it has to be done eight to 10 times exactly because we need to take our clients into alpha waves. If we don't do it, eight to 10 times, each of the pairs. If we do it too fast, also, we will not bring our clients into alpha wave. This is what I see very often that some they think, oh, this is very easy and I do it more than this. No, if you want the same results with your client as I have, it must be done perfect. So this is also, well, a way to talk about why we have to learn it. We absolutely have to learn to do it correctly. So the meaning by using step number one, it is like to a, a pass on button for all these four systems I already mentioned, the meridian flow, the electrical flow in our nerve system, the blood flow, and also the lymphatic flow. And by the rhythm and by pressing on the right point, on the right place of the points, we are also taking our clients into alpha mood. And already here, it is that we can hear and observe that the breathing of our clients are changing. And you will always see when a client is like relaxing on the uh, treatment table, you, in the first minute, maybe they will talk. And after a few minutes, they stop talking because they cannot even concentrate about talking anymore, no? They get into this alpha mode, which is a relaxing state. And it becomes like that by following the movement of the therapist hands in this way, in the right rhythm, it takes us automatically to a level of so deep relax that we will even stop talking and just relaxing, getting into this alpha mood. So everything is important and every step in facial reflexology, the seven basic steps is combined always in with a lot of personal research of me behind to make things happen in the right order. So it's not all uh, so just to split a treatment up as we like and or to build a treatment, change the order without studying how things have to work together. And this is actually what it is about to use step number one. And here we can see like an illustration with the meridian, with the electrical flow, with the blood flow, and with the lymphatic flow. The four things like activating when we are using step number one beside the alpha wave will be regulated. So I will always use step number two. I have already mentioned a couple of times that um, the body becomes before the brain. The body comes before the brain. What is now? I have been talking about the brain and all the functions of the brain until now. But actually, nothing, absolutely nothing will happen in our brain if our body is not working. 
because every brain cell is feeded by the chemistry of the body. Without the chemistry of the body, the brain cells and the brain functions would not work at all. Think about it. Our brain is working by insulin. <laughs> no, insulin. This is what our brain needs to work. So if our pancreas is not working, our brain cannot work. So we also need to be sure that all chemistry is working in the body. And uh, I hope I will have time to talk more about this, that the body before the brain, um, but to sure that the chemistry and the organs, because chemistry is not only a question about glands and hormones, also organs, that the glands and the organs is working well, feeding the brain with the right substances. There everything begin. Everything begin there. So it is interesting also to talk about that. So this is why step number two. And in step number two, we are um, uh, stimulating generally the whole body. Is of this area, the, it's named as colon area, um, lung area, stomach area, but this stomach or colon or lung or any other area is covering like in groups. The body is div divided into groups, uh, covering all groups of the body, all systems and all structures of the full body. So this is why step number two, you will always see it in any of my treatment protocols that I will include step number two. And here it is also that we in our basic education are learning how to analyze, how to analyze where there is a problem in a person's body, in which system. Very, very interesting that we can analyze with our hands this question. Then, after I have done step one and two, I will also do some specific stimulation of some of those points. In step number, number one, I'm doing all the points. In step number three here, it would be, I will do some of the points. In this question where we are talking about the mind, uh, I would prefer here in the process to stimulate what is related to the frontal lobe, as the frontal lobe is very, very important in this question. So in the frontal lobe, the yellow points are related. So I will do what we call an individual stimulation of the yellow points. Uh, and then I will also do what we call an NP balancing here. And the NP balancing is like to sit on this stop, 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 stop working the other uh, brain uh, lobes. If it didn't happen yet, I will do this extra to touch to be sure that now this will happen. So this helped me to set the stop on. So this is like, what we can we say, a basic step to start a mind treatment. But also what I have to do, it is to be sure that now I have obtained this function or this uh, reaction in the body that there's impulses telling the frontal lobe Give, sending alpha waves to the frontal lobe to relax. Other brain lobes will stop working. And now it is that the frontal lobe should connect directly inside the midbrain with the limbic center. And the method we call cyber therapy, or some call it Jin Chan, uh, the Vietnamese method with no points, can help me to act directly in the limbic center 
in the limbic system and amygdala, it can help me also to connect with the frontal lobe. So I will be sure that this connection, frontal lobe and um, the limbic system will connect, which means that our brain, the limbic center, will begin to reorganize our feelings. So this is the first part of the treatment plan, where everything is about the frontal lobe and the limbic center, the brain waves. I am working with this in the first part of the treatment in this way. And after that, we also have to learn about more brain structures to make this work. So we have to still, we have to take a look into the architecture of the brain. And here you can see this is the circuit I need to work together. And we already talked about the one and two here. It means the frontal lobe and the limbic center. We need to talk about insula and we need to talk about singular gyrus. So let's first take a look into insula. Insula is a very, very interesting structure of the brain. And the insula is placed deep in the, deep in the brain. Uh, insula is placed deeper uh, under the cortex, no? very deep in the brain. But it is actually a very, very important and interesting um, part or structure of our brain. What insula do, it is where um, the manifestation of who I am is created. No, who am I? Who am, who I am? <laughs> no, this is formed in a, every person inside in insula. Also very interesting. But also, there's another very important question around insula. Insula is like reading or getting information about the posture of our body. If I'm like this, or I'm stretched, or I'm well, related to emotions. It's very, very common when we are like in a um, bad emotional state, sadness, grief, that we, you know, in, it's not only common, <laughs> it's totally normal that we have a body posture related to our feelings. And this is what insula are reading. So this way around, insula get information about our body posture and we can say maybe that it transform our body posture into what is emotion around the same posture related to the posture so you, as you see posture is very important and we can understand it in this way that we can change our emotion by changing our posture so you see what I was explaining about, for instance, to stretch, no, to stretch, or to be um, aware or pay attention into my muscles and my body feelings and to, to stretch my body and to maintain my body in a good posture, change my emotions. Yes, it's really true. And when we know that, we can get worried about what's happening in the world. Here, look at this girl with a mobile. No, everybody with a mobile like this, everybody, children, young people. No, and still there's parents, they do not believe that it makes any damage of the body to be too much with advices. It, this is very surprising because this is actually neuroscience it is proved that the body's posture have to do with our insula this very important part of our brain 
and our emotions. So it's worth to think about it. Also here we actually see a um, child which is sad. You can read the, the body here, you know. Um, I, I don't think that this boy is with a mobile, no. For me, the way I read this photo, it is this little boy is in an emotional state, not good, no. Just by looking at his posture, no. And uh, this is uh, also affecting the emotion. Also, this posture, no, <laughs> it's also like, oh my God, an emotional situation. And uh, it's like a circle, no? Something outside the body have created this emotion, which is affecting our posture. And our insula read this and also read it as an emotional state. And this way around is not to get out of it again, if it lasts too long. Well, but this comes into the picture again, no? I already said it, stretch the body. And when you are sitting, whatever you are sitting, working, or you are walking, or whatever, try to be straight, because it has a very, very important, um, important <laughs> question for our, our insula and for our emotions. So stretch and be aware, pay attention. Again, if your frontal work is working well, if you are into this mood of alpha wave, you can pay attention to your posture. Well, but we can break this uh, question also by working with uh, facial reflexology. We also break it when we do meditation. I already explained this is the same uh, condition, so there's no different than that. And smile, no, smile. Because it is also our face expression is read by the insula. This is what I explained about the yoga technique. Stretch to get your position in the right way. Smile <laughs> because it has an influence in insula, a positive influence when you specially use the muscles around the mouth. Because it is here that we have most, most nerve connection, not only of the face, but of the whole body, to the brain. So this is why, you no know, face yoga is also very good, you no? Know, but it is the same, not maybe the same as meditation, because meditation, you can have some, uh, you have to, uh, to deal with a technique, you have to... Uh, some challenge you cannot overcome many times, but with face yoga, it's something actually you can learn, no? And um, this is also good, no, to help yourself if you are not able to get treatment, as many of our therapies, we never get treatment anymore. So at least we can smile, no? Smile. This is very, very important. So um, this is the muscles. I'm talking about here around the mouth. And we also have fantastic techniques. We have several techniques, microsystem to work with the muscles around the mouth or of the whole face, because actually it's best to work on the muscle of the whole face, stimulate the muscle of the whole face and more concentrated around the mouth. We will come back to this. So you can also understand if you are like um, this man, sad with this expression uh, every day, whole day, for a long time, this is not good, you know, for your insula. Your insula will read this and disturb the function of your insula. So this is why, again, it is so important to smile. And of course, if we are depressed, it is not easy to smile. I remember myself. I just talked about when I got my second diagnosis of lymphatic cancer. My old doctor, 80 years old, he was 80 years a day. He did the surgery, uh, removing the quarter of my body. Um, and uh, he asked me, Lune, when have you this, see, uh, last smiled? When did you last smile? 
And I looked at him and I said, actually, I do not remember. When have you uh, last time laughed? The same. I don't remember. I couldn't remember. Even once for a long, long time, I have been smiling or laughing. And of course, this was one of the components why I got sick. It is obviously. So, also children. You see children with this face expression. Wow. So, I can not say it enough. Smile. Smile, at least smile to yourself. If you do not want to smile to the world or you do not want to smile to other people, smile to yourself because it makes you to feel good. Smile and make your surroundings smiling. You know, if you smile to your surrounding, the surrounding will also smile to you. As you see here, even your dog will smile. So, when we have problem uh, with our insula, <laughs> because of the posture, because we don't use our face muscles, um, or because the frontal lobe and the limbic center is not working, we are not in this alpha mood, never. It will start up disturbing our insula. And insula is strongly related to our immune system. So here there's another reason how we break down our immune system. Think about it. It has a strong relationship with our immune system. Also, it has an influence in the taste, insula. Um, we think different about taste, no? Somebody, they like the dark chocolate, other they do not like dark chocolate, and so on. It has an influence how we are perceiving <laughs> the taste of chocolate, I will say it in this way, and also hunger. And this is maybe another, another very uh, interesting question, no? <clears throat> we have clients that want to lose weight, no? And um, yes, you see <laughs> here that it is also a brain question. It's not only in insula, also in our a brainstem. We have functions uh, telling us when we are hungry, but this this hunger we are talking about now, it's maybe to have an excessive hunger. So to help your client to control hunger, you also need to think in the brain or before the brain, the chemistry of the body. Mm -hmm. The chemistry of the body. We need to be regulated and we need to have a balance in between um, the frontal lobe, the limbic center, the uh, and now also the the insula. Very important. You know it from yourself. If we feel stressed, what do we think? I need chocolate or I need something sweet. Yes, this is when the monkeys start moving or the firework is becoming too much as our brain needs insulin. If we have a lot of firework going on in our brain, then we will need more insulin. And this is a mechanism where we start up caving. You see this? This is a, exactly the moment we start up caving because our system, our body and our brain wants more insulin and fast. So it also have a function, insula, in the visceral function. What does the visceral function mean? For instance, I give an example because I need to be short here. But uh, you see here a child who is tasting lemon. And when you are tasting lemon, the, automatically there is like a face expression, no? It makes like a reaction uh, of the muscles, not only in the face, like in the body, no? And also ghost bumps, no? This kind of thing. With lemon, we see it very often. This is 
visceral function. This is this connection of <clears throat> the taste and the motor sensitive system. This is what it also involves. And then we are also talking about social emotions. Social emotions have to do with insula, that we can feel happy um, because another person had success. Yes, this is a little bit um, a little bit for me to talk, think about because in Denmark, <laughs> um, where I am coming from, the culture they do not allow you even yourself to feel happy if you have succeed. They will always, in one and another way, tell you keep down, eh? Don't be too good, eh? Uh, so <laughs> there is something in the culture about social emotion in Denmark, no? You should never be happy or show you are happy because you got success with something. They will always, always keep you down. But the normal is that we should be able to feel an honest happiness because other people have success. This is what we uh, talk about. One of the things we talk about when we talk about social emotion, it could also be to feel sad with one, you know, if there's one who something happened in the family or they are getting sick or they got a cancer diagnosis, that we have this empathy. Empathy, it will also come. Perception, this is that you have like an idea of what is going on around you and also what is going around in yourself, around yourself, inside yourself, you know, to get this idea. No, am I in the right place? Am I feeling good? No, not to overhear your own sensation inside the body, but also in your space around you. So self-awareness, it is maybe more, more exactly this. How am I feeling? Am I feeling good? And this is what you can feel actually when you are doing meditation. I, am I feeling good? If you are concentrated in your own, in yourself, <laughs> then you will feel if you have some pain, you may be overheard, or if you are feeling good or bad, no, mentally and physically. Uh, and also this question to make decision. We also have this in the frontal lobe, but as it works together, the frontal lobe, the limbic system, and insula, very close. It works together. Then it is like you cannot separate it. So you will see some functions in insula that you will also find in frontal lobe and, and so on. This is just normal. When we are studying facial reflexology, because it is, what can we say, a limit time to learn very much about the brain, Thank God there is a very easy way to learn it where we can uh, work with the main of, we call it a root, because a function in the uh, frontal lobe, when we said um, plan to plan, it is a function of the uh, frontal lobe or behavior, it's a frontal lobe function. And it is true, and this is... a. Uh, the main function, but this function of behavior works together. We call it in a root with other areas inside the brain. It's never working alone, but stimulating the main, we get results because it will reflect in the root. I hope it, this gives some meaning. So whatever we already saw, that decision, to take a decision, do I want to do this or do I want to do that? Or I, oh, I don't know. This is also insula. So now I want to talk a little bit more about empathy because this is one of the things really worrying me very, very much latestly. In the latest years, maybe four or five years, I became more and more interested in this question, empathy. And empathy we also find in frontal as a behavior question, no? To feel empathy with other people, as I just said, to feel 
good when they have success and to uh, feel with a person when something terrible is happening to support another person. This is uh, like in what it's about. But you see it in children today. You see it in small children, really a huge problems already in kindergarten with empathy for others. And in school, oh, not to mention all the boring questions. And this is also getting worse and worse and worse. And the level of missing empathy is in in a way we never ever have seen before in the history. It has always existed, but it is more, more than ever, never. You you hear about it yourself, younger people, they're killing themselves because they can't stand the torture out more. So it's not only about not feeling empathy in this way that you are not supporting when somebody is sad or you are not sharing or you are not... Um, being happy because other is uh, having to sit is also about like a need to torture other another person, and also you can see it. And I have noticed that this is really much worse during this latest month of crisis. That the missing empathy is so so clear also online. The way people talk to each other each other. The way people attacked each other. I have tried it myself to be attacked where I think, my God, and every day it happens in our office to say it as it is. No, The way to communicate without any um, the, the, the understanding about that the simple thing can happen. No, even online it's not 100% sure nothing. No, uh, I don't know. But this is something we should where about. So this treatment protocol, I have built it up here, also include this function to uh, get a person with, with more empathy if this should be needed, and it would. <laughs> so also, I think here in younger uh, and in children, no? So this is emotion going around there in the insula, uh, and uh, yes, empathy one of the what can we see the most strong um, feelings or functions of insula so also um, insula is about the sensory processing and of course here it makes me always think in in um, children with brain questions no with brain damage or brain dysfunctions or um, person who have had a stroke or, or even Alzheimer, dementia, and uh, this kind of uh, illnesses also can be classified into um, this question, sensory pro processing, where they have problems. So also insula and the motor control, no, the fine motor control, it is about putting pearls on a thread, it is about touching small things, it is about closing buttons and also uh, this kind of small things around the clothes to, to manage this, which is also influenced by insula. When I said influence, it means that it also has to do with the frontal lobe, the motor sensitive area of the brain, and it doesn't work alone, but it has a very important influence. So, yes, we come now to the singular gyrus. And the singular gyrus, it is um, also a structure in the brain that we didn't talk so much about in the basic education, maybe not even mention it, because we don't go into so many structures of the um, of the singulate gyrus, but, but this structure it support like mm, insula in all the same as I have talked about until now about insula they work together. It's basically the posterior uh, singulate working together with insula. It has an influence beside in the memory. So here there's also 
questions about Parkinson's, Alzheimer, other demence illnesses coming into the question. Very, very important for uh, this uh, client group. And it could lead to, when there's a dysfunction in the posterior um, cingulate to mental illnesses, as for instance, OCD, which I'm also working a lot with, schizophrenia, also depression of any kinds. When I say depression of any kinds, because in the Tibetan medicine, we um, talk about six different states or kinds of depression. And also this situation, PTSD, which is also very common. And all this I have talked about, this four structure now, it also makes me think about children with ADAD. I often see that they also have unbalanced there. So now we come to the point where we have talked about the whole secret I want to talk about um, in um, related to managing the mind. So we have learned what can disturb and what can come, uh, what can be disturbed, which function can be disturbed, we have heard about here. When these parts are not working well, and it could be because of too many monkeys. If we never get these monkeys under control, if we never calm down the firework, this was would actually happen, uh, that we will have some dysfunctions if we have such a state for a long time. The last thing I want to mention related to the brain, it is also the two hemispheres. The two hemispheres, um, this is um, very important that we have a good coordination in between the right and the left of the brain parts. And what is this about? It is about that our right brain is the place where we, where everything about emotion, creativity, uh, all these kind of things of dancing, moving the body, doing sport, creating whatever, painting, it is going on there. We call this a creative brain lobe or brain part. It's not a lobe, it's a part. And in the other, it is all the, the left, logical thinking, it is plan to plan, to uh, mathematic uh, calculation and everything who has to do with numbers and scalars and all these kind of things, forms, triangles and pyramids and whatever. This is the lift. And there is some, we from nature maybe, they are a little bit more lift oriented and other more right oriented. We can also say that it is a the right brain is uh, important to know the emotional part of our brain and the left brain could then be, I think the logic brain will be the right word. No, it's another way to see it. But the best thing is if we have a coordination and many times we do not have a good coordination in between left and right. And how can you see this? If you talk to a person, especially, um, then you could notice that this person is very emotional, no? very emotional. And if a person is very emotional, then it is that she is dominated or he is dominated by the right brain hemisphere. And if a person is more to uh, numbers and always a logical explanation of everything, don't you see how it is, you're easy, fast, no? not too many emotion mixed with the situation, then it is a left hemisphere person. Well, as I said, we should have a balance. And um, this is very important. And facial reflexality also helps us to get this balance. And actually the full treatment, <laughs> the full treatment because we are working on both sides, especially where we are working on both sides of the face at the same moment, 
for instance, with this step number one, when we are working with points all over the face, this is a, a very good stimulation for a better communication in between the left and the right. So we also have a step number seven in the basic step of uh, facial reflexology. I will show in a, another moment uh, how it is uh, for you who don't know it already. Uh, which is a special stimulation for a better coordination in between the two brain hemispheres. I want to mention the motor sensitive area as the last for this part. The motor sensitive area, which is a part of our brain up here on the scalp, in more than this, the mid of the brain, a little bit more to the front. And this is where we have this double function of motor function and sensitive function, which is mixed. And um, what uh, happened there, it is that, well, there's a pure motor function in the frontal lobe and there's a pure sensitive function in the parietal lobe. Uh, but as a brain, as I already said, never works alone, no, each uh, of the parts. Um, there's some functions of our body where we need um, both of those functions to work together. It means motor function, sensitive function. And this is what happened in this brain areas where a part of the frontal and a part of the parietal lobe comes together. And this is also where we find this brain function we call homunculus. Homunculus, it means a little man. No, it's a Greek word and means a little man. Inside our brain, we can use this uh, chart to understand um, where function, for instance, for the lips are placed, the upper lips, the under lips, the teeth, uh, the leg, the hip, and where we have like areas for this brain uh, structures of brain um, uh, the, uh, of the body. No, brain areas for certain places of the body. I think this is the right way to say it. And um, here we actually find the explanation to look into this homunculus, why the face and the hand is so important in, in a neurological aspect. We can see here how big the face is uh, related to the rest of the body. We can see here how big the hands they are related to the body. Look at the hands, they are bigger than the feet. Look at the face, they are bigger than the, than, than the feet. And this is the way you also can see it here, no? How much the face <laughs> takes of this space. And this is proved by neuroscience that it is, this is the, the reason why we have so many nerve relationships from the face, much more from any other place of the body, to the brain, mm -hmm. to the frontal brain, to the limbic center, to insula, and also to singular. So, also the hands. If you look at this drawing, you can see the face is the biggest, then the hands, and see how small it is. And now I am not supposed to tell you that food reflexology doesn't work. Of course it does. And we also have neuro reflexology from uh, the feet, <laughs> of course. And food reflexology has some benefit that facial reflexology not, do not have and opposite. So it's not to set it up, no, and say, oh, facial reflexology is better than feed, but not at all. It's just to make you understand that actually it is proved scientifically that there are more concentration of nerve endings from the face to the brain and also to the rest of the body, as well as for the hands. 
And in my method of neuroreflexology, the most common I do, it is to combine. If we take a look into rehabilitation method, Tembrana reflex therapy, I'm combining the neuro face, the neuro hands and neuro food to do rehabilitation programs for disabled ch ch children as adults. There's really no difference in that. So this is a, the exciting moment where I can tell you why and why, and that it is a claim that has a scientific research behind that we have all these nerves ending from the face and the muscles of the face, the smiling muscle goes directly to insula when they get stimulated. So this is the point we came to today. So thank you very much for today.